thesis or a dissertation is a must criteria to get md or ms degree in india the paradox is that during the 3 years of obg residency the clinical duties and learning is so diverse and challenging that students fail to give focus to this important part of their curriculum actually the time when the thesis topic is chosen the just joined resident has hardly any understanding of the subject as well as the challenges faced during a thesis so today i bring 21 doable thesis topics for obg residents as you might expect yes my focus will be on urogynecology as i keep on repeating and reminding that urogynecology is the youngest baby of obg so unexplored so less understood that there is a huge opportunity of research starting from the simplest epidemiological studies to the gene level ones but before i start telling you the topics focus here to know what are the prerequisites of a thesis so number 1 the thesis question must be new research means that you are bringing home something new something that's already not known which can actually be a big challenge for residents who have just started their career in the field The second thing is that the disease or the problem in question should be a common one in your hospital or your institution so that you have no issue in achieving a good sample size. There should be no extra cost to the patient or else you must seek some funding. As far as possible the test you are planning should be a non-invasive one until and unless you are part of a big project in your department that is already approved by ethics board last but maybe the most important you must not do it just for the sake of doing something your research should add some value to the current knowledge understanding or practice of the subject let's start from the simple topics comparison of root of hysterectomy and quality of life can be a very interesting and easy area to explore roots of hysterectomy means abdominal vaginal or lap though the benefits of vaginal and laparoscopic hysterectomy from an objective and economic point of view has been already studied no one has tried to find out whether it actually matters to the patient and her quality of life in long term You may collect data of all these patients from your hospital records and interview these patients after 1 or 2 or 5 years following the surgery. EQ5D is a widely validated and a very simple quality of life tool that can be used for this. Topic 2: Pessary for prolapse. Adherence in pandemic times will be an interesting study. as well as a useful one for the future especially in times that we are entering in the future which is full of uncertainties and unexpected lockdowns this study will be good for institutions where pessary insertion is a common practice for pelvic organ prolapse the study can be even performed telephonically include all women who were put on pessary in last 3 to 5 years collect their demographic details and try to find out a correlation with their adherence to instructions given to them the secondary outcomes can be the complications during this time the need of removal and quality of life we have a lot of scope of research in the field of preventive urogynecology also it's all about how best we can manage labor and childbirth So there are many many topics which need clinical evidence to add continue or delete it from our routine clinical practice. In this respect one research topic can be awareness of pregnant women about pelvic floor disorders. You can include all antenatal or pregnant women who are coming to seek care from you so the sample size is easy to achieve. it will also be an indirect motivation for
for them to indulge in some pelvic floor muscle training program if they are already not doing so. Indirect education to the subgroup of patients and relatives who are inclined to vaginal delivery somehow at any cost will also be an important aspect to look into. Perineal massage as I see it has become like a forgotten art among the younger generation of obstetricians. But recently some articles have been published highlighting the goodness of it during pregnancy and labor. It will be an interesting study as outcomes may vary in different population based on the makeup of their connective tissue. There is a big campaign going on now about the labor room violence. It's time that we correct ourselves and all the supporting staff present in the labor wards before the fire hits us. It will be a questionnaire based study among the women who have delivered a child comparing their expectations and what was their experience. The questionnaire should be based on patient demographics and prevailing practices of the institution. Trust me, it will be a very important study for insight and to decide the need to change our current practices. When it comes to preventive urogynecology, we have been doing recently a lot of work with the trigonometric characteristics of episiotomy. In your institution, you can also do a lot of studies like angle of episiotomy, perception and practice. Among those who conduct deliveries, usually in India, those are junior residents or interns in medical colleges, it will be a practice changing study. The correlation between discrepancy between what they perceive and what they practice and to correlate it with label of their experience will be very interesting to note down. In the same cohort of junior residents and interns, role of reinforcement in correcting the episiotomy angle will be a practice changing study. We can do it in a case control way or even a randomized control trial can be done where there are two groups one is taught or reinforced to do what they are doing and the other will be the control group. Moving on to the pelvic organ prolapse. We all have witnessed and hypothesized sometime or the other in our clinical practice that childbirth is not the only cause of prolapse. There is much more to it. A qualitative study where we try to identify the risk factors in individuals or small groups by interviewing them would be path-breaking. It will form a platform to conduct future quantitative studies for the same. Now there is one topic which I feel very strongly for. Attitude and awareness about pelvic floor among the fitness-free generation. As I have seen a correlation of this with pelvic floor disorders a lot of late. The sample can be or the cohort can be young women who are enrolled in gymnasiums. As there is no such study in the past, the questionnaire needs to be created and validated. It will also act like an awareness program for women who are too crazily getting indulged into this training programs without thinking much about their pelvic floor support. If you are inclined to do something related to surgery for your thesis, a comparison of blood loss with various strategies of hydrodissection during vaginal hysterectomies would be a good one. You can have different arms with adrenaline, vasopressin, normal saline versus the control group. The only negative point of this is that quantification of blood loss is not easy. But if it is done methodically and nicely, it will be an important study for future clinical practices. 
when there is so much talk going on about uterine conservation globally understanding the attitude of indian women about it would be interesting as in india we feel the trend is opposite and the mindset is different it for sure needs a statistical analysis to create awareness program their fears concerns and doubts need to be addressed similarly we should also try to understand the attitude and concerns of an indian gynecologist about uterine conservation the mindset of patient financial concerns and follow up issues might be an important factor in that and we need to address these issues topic number 13 lower urinary tract symptoms and bladder wall thickness in anterior vaginal wall prolapse we have done some preliminary work on this and we realized that it can be measured very easily with transvaginal sonography most of the studies which are done to correlate the bladder wall thickness said that it is a marker of urgency and a marker of the management or its cure but there is no study that has been done in women with prolapse we feel that prolapse itself might affect the bladder wall thickness and may or may not be a marker as in other patients men or women without prolapse Fourteenth in the list is levator hiatus and levator ani tone. Are they related in pelvic organ prolapse or pelvic floor dysfunctions? It will be a study of comparison of anatomy versus its function. You need a three D perineal ultrasound for this study to look at the anatomy, and for physiology, Oxford grading of muscle tone is a simple and easily adaptable tool. If you want to do something really fancy you can look into this hypothesis which says that oxidative stress is a possible trigger for pelvic organ prolapse mitochondrial dna copy number variation in cases of uterine prolapse would be interesting to look into but these kind of studies need some funding the good point is that for these studies a very small sample size is good enough Tissue sample can be easily obtained. A tiny portion of uterosacral ligaments from hysterectomy specimen would be enough. Cases will be prolapse hysterectomies, and control will be the other hysterectomies, like abdominal non-descent vaginal hysterectomy and laparoscopic hysterectomy, which is done for benign diseases. In similar lines, you can also check. other markers of oxidative stress in uterine prolapse these other markers depend on your ecosystem or your collaboration with the people who will be testing those you will find a lot of them once you start searching the literature for the same stress urinary incontinence is another big topic when it comes to urogynecology there is no index which tells about the level of severity in women except for just assessing the quality of life we are presently working on such a novel severity index for sui in our population if you are interested we can share the information with you and you can validate it in your region or population If you have been seeing prolapse cases you know that cervical elongation is a commonly seen entity but there are not many studies to explore the etiology and prevalence or risk factors of the same the sample size will be easy to achieve i feel and there is no cost involved if we try to assess the prevalence and risk factors of cervical elongation in prolapse and non prolapse uteri study number 19 prevalence and impact of levator ani muscle avulsion in pelvic organ prolapse 
it will be a non-invasive observational study but needs the availability of 3D ultrasound. This study also has a potential to change the current surgical practices in the management of prolapse as if we can find out before only that if there is levator ani muscle aversion or not and correlate it with the degree of prolapse and interpret this with what management we are planning that will be something really great idea number 19 is to study post hysterectomy wall prolapse its risk factors especially in the era where we are quantifying everything with pelvic organ prolapse quantification system. It will be an epidemiological study, retrospective analysis and qualitative assessment of these patients can be done. The analysis and assessment of demographic factors, examination findings, operative notes and post-operative care regimen should be done. It will help in formulating recommendations and guidelines for management of patients undergoing hysterectomy in future. As we are coming towards the end of today's topic of ideation for thesis, let's talk about one of the most common benign pathologies seen in gynecology and try to correlate it with urinary symptoms. It will be a very interesting as well as an end topic. You can refer to the IUGA journal February 2021 publication and see there the first study published in the same. Continuing with the same, efficacy of medical management of fibroids specifically for urinary symptoms will also be very interesting. Surgical management has already been studied. The study you can refer to is FAB study published in 2018. But the medical management, which is relatively new, has never been studied for the same. It will be interesting in this era where medical management is gaining popularity for managing the fibroids as far as their menstrual symptoms are concerned. And that was my list of 21 topics for the residents who are entering OBG in 2021. Feel free to ask if you have any questions or concerns.